Well, the state's attorney general is always busy during a legislative session. Not only is his legal expertise required on a variety of state subjects, but the attorney general typically brings a push for changes to the law. Joining me now to discuss his legislative agenda is Attorney General Dustin McDaniel. General, thanks so much for your time. It's great to be with you, Roby. Let's talk about a few things you've got percolating in advance of the 2011 legislative session. Let's start with sports agents. Um, in the wake of this, the Cam Newton and Reggie Bush controversies of the last year, uh, lawmakers and yourself are looking at legislation to penalize sports agents who kind of prey on these college athletes. Tell me what's being proposed, and will the penalty be enough to deter this activity in your mind? Well, under the current law, the Attorney General has the responsibility uh, to enforce what we have in place now. Uh, but the truth is, uh, when you have sports agents with runners and uh, intermediaries that are out there trying uh, to play the system, take advantage of young student athletes, you know, it, if they're caught, the student athlete's career can be destroyed, uh, certainly severely damaged. Uh, the public institutions, you know, the universities, uh, stand to lose tens of millions of dollars, and there's very little risk, truthfully, uh, to the sports agents or to the intermediaries, whether that's their family members uh, or uh, pastors or whoever else might be the go-between. Uh, I think that we need to, to really put some teeth in that law, and uh, I know that Representative elect David Sanders uh, and I are planning on uh, doing this together. Um, I've got great support from the athletic uh, departments of our uh, universities. I think that uh, we may even see Jeff Long come down uh, to help us present the bill, and that's my hope. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Well, the proliferation of the internet and our dependence on it's created a, a variety of new ways for consumers and residents to get scammed. What, what tools are you lacking in this realm, and what do you and prosecutors need to kind of better protect citizens? I intended to, uh, to create a world-class cyber crimes division right here in the Attorney General's office. I'm not going to have to spend tax money uh, on it. Uh, we have uh, dollars that we've recovered from pharmaceutical companies who took advantage of Arkansas's children. I frankly think that Arkansas's children ought to be the beneficiaries of that money. And this time next year, I think that agents from the AG's office will be assisting local law enforcement and prosecutors and actually tracking down people that use the internet to prey on our children and also assisting with things like ID theft investigations. I'm really excited about it and it's going to take the Attorney General's office to the next level in this uh, new realm of law enforcement. Does this involve bringing more people on staff? Does it um, involve different types of equipment, new surveillance? What, what all is involved in this new division? Well, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, getting uh, the division actually built and constructed. And again, we're not having to use money out of our budget or out of uh, uh, the tax revenue uh, that the state provides us. Um, and, and taking a look at the state of, uh, of the art equipment that's going to be in there. With regard to staff, I intend to use the existing staff that we have. We may have to reallocate and provide some additional responsibilities to some people. But frankly, my staff's excited about it because they know that it's the kind of thing that we should be doing. Probably a bill will run in the legislature to ensure that my crime victim's attorney can also provide uh, legal uh, support to the uh, cyber crimes division. Doesn't require any additional money. It doesn't take away from what he's doing uh, for uh, our crime victims division, but also just to make sure that he's authorized to work on other things. That seems like uh, uh, just common sense, but it needs to be uh, clear. I think it's going to be a, a very good use of existing resources and people will be proud of how much we are able to squeeze out of the turnip. Well, there are rumblings at the Capitol from some lawmakers who'd like to see the minimum enrollment standard for school districts reconsidered or revisited. Some of this stems from the Wiener School District's attempt this past year to, to not be consolidated because it was right on the border of that minimum threshold. Uh, with so many new legislators coming on board and the lack of knowledge of how difficult it was to pull the state out of Lakeview, are, are you worried that Lakeview could be revisited? Well, as I've said, my three major educational goals uh, as Attorney General would be to get us out of Lakeview. We've done that. Stay out of Lakeview. We've done that so far. And to bring a tangible end to the Pulaski County desegregation case. We're working very hard on that. Uh, with regard to this upcoming legislative session, I appreciate that there are some uh, new ideas coming to the Capitol, 
and I want to help legislators and school superintendents work through whatever they would like to do and help them accomplish their goals. But they have to have a perspective on uh, the legal ramifications of whatever they try to do uh, in this next session. One of the reasons I'm running a much lighter legislative package is because I want to make sure that they know that their attorney general and, and my staff are available to them day or night so that we can talk about their goals, what they want to do, and how we make sure that we do not break trust with our commitments to the courts or to our children. Well, tell me, how far will you go to fight changes, or, or do you see a point or two where the Lakeview Agreement could be modified? Well, I mean, we have a tried and true system, and the, the simple truth is um, the legislature could modify, uh, for instance, the 350 student enrollment number. They could do that, but the, the court says that we have to show our math about how we make changes and why. If you're going to make substantial changes to the court-approved uh, formula or structure for Arkansas's public schools, you're not really going to be able to do that starting in the session. You're going to have to do that through the Act 57 hearings, which take place before the session. Um, you have to be able to demonstrate that what you're doing uh, is sound and does not impact adequacy and that whatever funding uh, consequences there may be for uh, the policy that you want to put forth is also there in advance. Uh, that's the kind of thing that is not really necessary if you want to run some other piece of legislation, but on education there is a system that is m much more complicated than just filing a bill and running it in committee. That's what we want to help them to understand. Well, it does appear that a big session issue is going to center on prisons and how we address our growing prison population. Uh, do you advocate lessening some sentences for less serious crimes or maybe even some more community punishment for nonviolent offenders as the governor suggested? Well, I'm listening uh, and I'm a part of that conversation and I'm having the opportunity to talk to some legislators. I've reviewed some of the proposals and I have to say there are some things that I am not comfortable with. Uh, I am not comfortable uh, with reducing methamphetamine possession to a misdemeanor. Uh, really under any circumstances. We have fought too hard to battle the scourge of methamphetamine in Arkansas and that's something that I'm going to be a very tough sell on. Uh, but I recognize that we spend too much money uh, incarcerating people. Incarcerating people. I, I, I realize that uh, recidivism is a huge concern and uh, as the state's top law enforcement officer I expect the Attorney General's office to have a voice uh, in that debate. You mentioned methamphetamine. Is, is there any other line that you won't cross in this prison reform debate? Well, that's been, that's been one of the big ones, uh, but to be truthful, uh, I've only glanced at the uh, Pew study and had brief conversations about it, so I, I don't want to be premature in, in, in drawing hard and fast lines. I want to hear uh, all of the evidence uh, that, that we'll get from prosecutors and uh, corrections officials, uh, et cetera. Obviously a big issue in this next legislative session is going to be redrawing district lines for state lawmakers, state representatives, state senators. Tell me where we are in the redistricting process and, and what are going to be some of your guiding principles? Well, every 10 years the lines for congressional representation and legislative representation have to be redrawn uh, to account for changes in population. Uh, the legislature handles the federal uh, legislative boundaries, the congressional districts, but the legislative boundaries are handled by the uh, reapportionment commission, which is the governor, uh, the attorney general, and the secretary of state. There's a great deal of apprehension about it. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of rumors flying around the Capitol right now. Uh, everywhere I go, people are eager to talk to me about it, at least legislators are, and certainly a lot of community leaders because they're concerned about being underrepresented in some way. I want people to know that, that we intend to be, and I am committed to being transparent in the process. I'm committed to being nonpartisan in the process. I want to uh, adhere to uh, existing political boundaries to the extent possible, city limits, county lines, etc. Uh, it is something that is causing a great deal of stress, you know, both in our office and at the Capitol. Uh, but I want folks to know that I'm committed to making sure that we're as professional in the process as possible so that the next 10 years of representation in Arkansas uh, are based on sound evidence and, and, uh, and solid principles. 